I think we all should be above that. Yeah, I'll look I think, folks. Okay, you don't have to sleep with the guy if you don't like him. But the fact is that if you don't like a guy, he's not going to dry up and blow up dust. We're here, we're all here. The martial arts scene today exists as it exists through the process of evolution that it went through. So that no matter of whatever personal animosities people may have amongst themselves, I don't feel it should be allowed in any way to influence the progress of the martial arts scene because it is bigger than individuals. No individual is indispensable, right? No individual can set themselves up as El Suprema because no matter how much anybody knows or how good they are, there's always somebody better. I think John Harris said to me, one of the best things I've ever heard in my life, probably an old bush saying, there's never the horse that can't be rode and there's never the rider that can't be thrown. So that none of us have got anything to get on any high horses about. Who, who of us can say we are the best? Right, no way. Because no matter how damn good we all are, there's always improved for improvement. And apropos of this, I'll read you a letter I got many, many years ago, which said a lot to me. It's dated January 28, 1975, and it's from a chap called Helmut Nickel, who was the curator of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. He is a well-known author on the subject. He's a practical armor, armorer. He is an archaeologist, and he's also involved in the restoration of arms and armor. So he's a practical armorer. He's an, uh, an accredited academic expert in the field. And what I'm going to say, we'll mention the SCA, and it's not meant to slight upon the current Australian SCA, okay? All right? It is. This was referring to American SCA in 1975. And also, as I say, this is a purely personal comment from a man who has been involved with them. I, we, we had been corresponding from some time. He was very, very interested in what we were doing. Um, he said here in 1975 that he was very impressed by the standard achieved by the AWMAS, which, as I say, with the exception of the Vikings in those days, was the only, only group. He was very impressed. He must say, though I must say, he had given me the address of the SCA in, um, in America, to whom we wrote, but we never got any reply. Uh, I must say that the efforts and results of the SCA are generally falling far short of your achievements, and it might be useful for you to get in touch with them, blah, blah, and he gave me um, Frederick the Silence address, if anyone in the SCA has heard of him. Um, now, what he was in effect saying was that in 1975, the Australian martial arts scene, the quality of equipment that was being made and used was superior to anywhere in the world. Because at, in 1975, the Norse Film and Pageant Society, uh, the Vikings were still wearing horned helmets. As far as I know, they weren't making any real mail. Uh, I had considerable correspondence with them. Uh, they sent photographs, we exchanged photographs and so on. So that even today, the research that I've done, I've been in touch with overseas contacts, I've got photographs of more recent uh, other overseas movements. Even today, Australia can boast of having the best and most authentic medieval warriors in the world. We're the best. There's no bloody way about it, we are the best. Okay? In the standard of our equipment. Now, but for all that, it can be made better. I've seen things going on the battlefields that have made me cringe. Like, we'll make a real Viking cringe or we'll make a real army cringe. But it's still better than what overseas got in a lot of cases. But generally speaking, it's only minor detail things that make people cringe if they know. So a lot of it can be put down to, say, lack of available information or lack of technology. Now, there's no way in the world anybody can expect someone to turn up with a, um, you know, a gold filigreed brooch with inlaid garnets or something as the uh, Sutton Hood brooches may have been. We don't expect that, but certainly brass and a bit of red enamel will give the visual effect. And if the style is correct, that's, that's what's going to do it. So, that, okay, I'm giving us all a bouquet in saying you're the best, and I'll stand by that, but I'm giving us a brick back to say, okay, it can be better. Now, I think that's a pretty fair statement of how the situation is at the moment. We're good, but we want to get better. And the only way to get better is by interaction and sharing of resources, that is to say, sharing of information. Because nobody has got the patent right on knowledge, nobody's got the patent rights on being a medievalist or a martial artist. It's bigger than individuals because of the very fact that it's all here and it's all now and it's all happening, right? Just because one guy decided to have some sort of a society doesn't mean that they've got the exclusive right for the rest of time to be that. 
And I, that goes for me, it goes for any club, any time, anywhere. Because sooner or later somebody else is going to have the same damn idea and do a club. Okay? And there's no way you can do anything about it because it's not a patent idea. So that means that much as whether we like it or not, the opposition isn't going to dry up and blow away. So it's better, rather than have, rather than have antagonisms between clubs, you know, um, it's, it just depends. I think it's a matter of attitude. Do you want exclusive rights? Well, okay. But I think that there's a lot, there have been a few delicate egos. There's some in my club I know, there's some in other clubs I've heard of. Um, people who perhaps, you know, for various reasons are a little bit delicate in their, their approach. But what are you really in it for? That's what I say to them. Are you in it for money? Are you in it for fun? Are you, are you in it because you uh, want to use the, the uh, thing as a sport? Or are you concerned with the educational aspects of it? Because we've got one of the most valid teaching aids to medieval history that anyone could ever want. And if the authenticity of the thing is good enough, there wouldn't be an educational department in Australia who wouldn't love us. And I know that Macquarie University hierarchy here, the, the, the Vice Chancellor himself, has been wrapped in what's been happening. And I, I'm just, we invited him to come, unfortunately he couldn't come, but I'm sure he would have been wrapped in it. The thing is that, provided that academics can see, and when I say academics, I mean people like museum curators, I mean like experts, authors, archaeologists, provided that experts and academics can see that the, the interest is a genuine interest, and that a real effort is being made to achieve, achieve maximum authenticity, they'll go out of their way to bend over backwards to help you. And I've always ever found it thus. So that what I am saying is that what we should do is be all doing is that, okay, I'm going to propose, a, which we will be able to talk about when we come to the old thing. This isn't really the time to talk about it. I'm just going to throw an idea, a few ideas into the ring, and then you want, I want you to think about them, and then we'll be able to have on Sunday morning an all thing where we can get down to some really serious discussion about the matter. But this is just the germ of the idea. And I might add, by the way, it is, it is not a power play on my part. Any national movement or whatever comes out of it, I don't want any office. I wouldn't put myself up for any office. I wouldn't accept any office if it, if it did happen. My interest is in the movement as a whole. I'm very interested in research and, of course, in manufacture of things. I'm getting a little bit old for active combat now, I'm 42, so you know, I reckon give myself another few years and I might have to drop off that. But I like to take up a sword occasionally. But the young blacks, I know, they can stick it up me any time they like because I'm just getting too slow. And but the thing is, what I would like to see happen is, and this is the thing you have to work out amongst yourselves, I can perhaps help with guidelines, but I don't think it's my prerogative to give you any definitions. But all I want to say is, a simile to what I would like to see happen is like the Motor Traders Association, that is to say where you've got a number of independent companies or workers who are all bound together loosely, they're still basically independent, they have a common code of ethics in as much as their code of ethics covers the areas where they deal with the public and interact with each other. So in, in putting it in our terms of reference, to enable groups to come together and perhaps fight together if they want to, to enable group, intergroup contact and competition to happen, there must be some grounds of commonality. Now, what I, what I believe is that as a lot of the clubs all stem from the LAWMAS or the Vikings, I've got a fair idea, and I'm sure there is sufficient grounds for commonality to allow for interclub contact in the sense of combat and, of course, socially. Socially, there should be no problems. But of course, combat is always and ever the problem. But a well-trained warrior, a well-trained warrior can cope with anything. And I don't give a damn what. Because if a man is competent in the use of his weapons, and he's fit enough to use them, and if he's got a fair idea that of a general style of fighting that he's going to occur, he should be able to cope with anything. Because when you look at the Asian martial arts, they've codified worldwide. You've got an international... Um, well, you've got different schools of it, but you've got international schools of it, so that a warrior from one country can go and say, fight in a kendo competition in another country, and know that he that the basic style is basically similar. So that, let's let's think about what what's in it for me, what's in it for anybody. That is more communication, 
Well, I think a national magazine should at least come out of this. We've got New Hedeby with Brian. I know most of the clubs have got a small news sheet they put out. I read some of them and they're damn good efforts. Because, but just imagine if we were able to put out a national magazine and maybe even sell the damn thing internationally too. Because let's face it, there's hundreds of war gamers that might want to get practical. There's thousands of people that probably are interested and don't even know about medieval martial arts. So one thing I'd like to see happen is a national magazine. The mechanisms for it are, are, are virtually already here. Another thing that should come out of it is better research information. Public libraries have got fairly limited research availabilities. Even university libraries have their limitations. What I'm saying is we do what I've been doing for many years, that is go directly to the experts that we can set up through those in each state that are interested. Uh, better lines of communication with the real experts in the fields. Um, and that will save a lot of problems. If we have, say, two or three guys writing to the experts and getting specific information, it'll save, him being driven, save the experts being driven there by 50 or 60 individuals. And he's more likely to part with good information to a national movement if we had uh, a national research officer that people from any club could write to and say, look, I want photographs, sizes, weights and dimensions of so-and-so. OK, off to Fred Nurk at the Met Museum or Joe Blow at the Belgrade, Bel Bel I can't even say Bulgarian Museum. OK, but you know what I mean. If we put it, if we're doing through a, an accredited national movement of some sort or another, then we've got better chances of getting... Also, if we work through universities, for example, there can be inter-university exchanges of, of, of information. And believe me, some of the information that is available is totally phenomenal because it's opened my eyes up. Um, even some of the students in the, in the Macquarie University Society haven't made full use of the facilities that a university can provide. And universities will help outsiders. You don't have to be a university student. It's just a matter of you know, approaching them in the right way. So with better research info, we can all make better gear so that the Australian clubs can not only be better, but not only be best, but be better, better, best, if you know what I mean. I'm not, a, I'm not an English language major, so excuse the... <laughs> so the possibility of inter-club inter interactions should be looked at through whatever means. I've, I've postulated that we can get into some method of grading warriors that perhaps a, an Australia-wide meeting could approve certain of the older members to grade warriors, and they've all got a basic type of grading. I don't know, this, this can all be gone into. That everybody, you know, you can have sort of a basic sort of... Uh, a beginner, man at arms, uh, or whatever, and, and progressing up to marshals or, or whatever. The thing is, can, it can all be worked out to everybody's satisfaction. And that way, if you know you're going to have inter-club interaction, you're not going to put top-grade marshals in against beginners. Um, the, the thing is that the advantage of that is that if you have, say, a situation, this probably stems from one of the misconceptions of one of these rumours. Say you wanted to put on a fat Hastings, right? You might have and put six guys on each side. Okay. Now, now, it takes a lot of imagination to pull that pace. But if you've got 150 men on each side, boy, it's bigger. <coughs> if you've got 150 men on each side, it's going to look a damn sight better. And it's going to make a lot more spectacle, and a lot more people are going to be more interested. So you might say, okay, if the club say, look, if one club says, we need a 50 men or we need 20 men, and the three or four other clubs all send some men along, on a share, on a share, a fee sharing basis, it's got to be totally honest, you know, <coughs> fee sharing basis, the way the show is going to be, you might say, oh, well, we're going to be fighting people we haven't, we, we've never dealt with before. But if they're trained, and they rehearse the thing a few times anyway. They're basically trained so that you can say, all right, we've got our great ones in the front line. So that you so say you've got club A here and club B here. So you work it this way, you split your men. You've got club A fighting club A, club A fighting club A. That means they don't have to fight blokes they've never touched before. But they're well enough trained to take it handle the dash. Right, so you'd have club B here, club B here, so on. Right? In the background, making up your back lines, you can have all your grades of movies and so on. This is only a suggestion, I'm not saying this is the way you work it, but these are, are rational uh, ways of, of handling it. Um, some people might feel quite comfortable fighting all comers. That, that, that's totally up to the individual, totally up to the individual. And of course, how, how well trained they are. But I've always maintained, and I've found it throughout the years, that a well-trained warrior who's capable, right, capable 
than handling. Because let's face it, in rural warfare, you didn't have any choice but to shot at you. But um, this, these are the things. The thing is that assistance at charge is, is a very big thing because I'm not saying all the time, but there comes times in every club's um, experience when they've got to have extra, and really having an extra few people on hand would make a big damn difference. And we mustn't forget the fact that having a larger number of people gives you that much, I think we all know this, that you, when you've got a show to do for an hour or so, no man, right, no man in full armour can fight continuously, fight after fight after fight, he's got to have a break. So if you've got other warriors to fill in, you're going to be able to have that break. And not neglecting the thing that you may have females who can assist with more genteel things. I see have female fighters, and I see no objection to that. If they're prepared to take a risk, they're prepared to go, they want to be up there. But if you have people who are doing things such as juggling, musical things, and so forth and so forth, in between the combats, you can firstly make a show bigger and better and last longer. Because people tend to get bored, we all know this, that if they're waiting around while Billy's looking for his hallmark and Fred over here can't find his sword, and Jesus Christ, where's the flaming cloak, you know? Well, you all know it. People tend to wander away, or they, or they think we're unprofessional, or something like that, because let's face it, we're all trying to be as professional as possible. And I think we're all doing a pretty good job, really. I, don't know. I mean, okay, each club's different, and each club's got a different approach to it. But, you know, it can be improved. And the only, I think the way to improve is by interaction and getting more, more and more interaction to make it better. Because let's face it, we're, we're supposed to all have a common interest and, uh, and so on. So I would say, basically speaking, that if, if, is any, has everybody seen a copy of this thing that I, I typed up to be sent around for the uh, convention? Has every club had one? Uh, for those that haven't, we can make sure you get them. Uh, I've outlined in, in greater form the, the things that I uh, wanted to bring up, that is to say accurate information. Another thing is keeping historical records of the movement. See, unfortunately, I haven't got complete records of the movement. Well, I don't. There's no, there's no problem in life that I should have. But it would be nice that we have each club or, or the movement as a whole could have a few scribes that keep records and photographs so that eventually, say, some books could be written on, on, on the history of the movement accurately, not like Burbers like I did. To publish a regular magazine, to organise regular inter-club conferences like this on whatever level our people would like to have them, to assist with the formation and the recruitment for new societies, because I think it's a good thing to have more societies because there is a practical limit on the size of a society, I've found. So if they get too big, they become unruly. A big enough country, there's enough work for everyone. They don't need to cut one another's throats. Um, a matter of simple communication is all that's required so we don't tread on anybody else's toes. Perhaps even the, the establishment of areas or, I don't know, these are things that could be discussed as a normal thing. Uh, perhaps even have some sort of a forum for, well, technical problems or any problems at all. To establish a common code of ethics for all clubs. In other words, to have some some agreement on combat rules, some agreement on combat rules, where applied to inter club. Well, I'm not saying change your club rules, I'm just saying if we can get some common agreement on inter club combats, uh, in as much as it affects inter club work, if, if, they, if you're going to have inter club work. And to codify in some way medieval martial arts, right, to codify it much the same way as these. Med as these um, oriental martial arts have been codified. That is to say, there exist early medieval combat instruction manuals, uh, tournament books and so on. These exist in uh, libraries overseas. Maximum effort is made to ensure accuracy of equipment and fighting style. That is to say, in grade one you would have a situation where even your belt buckle would be correct, you would have the correct type of things. So if you go in front of a school or whoever, that teacher can say, well, that is 100% correct, or 99, or whatever. You know, that the swords are made in the same way as the originals, that they are um, correct weight, correct balance, all that sort of thing. Okay, so that as a teaching aid, it's 100% valid. Second style would be freestyle combat, which would be, in inverted commas, in the style of a period or an era, or whatever, but not necessarily 100% accurate. So the people who wanted to use it as a sporting venue could do so without having to worry too much. As long as they keep the general broad guidelines of style, they should be all go trying to get medieval things together. And I think that 
if this conference pays off, it will be well worth it. But if nothing else, you'll have something to remember. But there's a couple of things I'd just like to say before I conclude on, on this opening address in club groups at the feast, because we want to be very ecumenical. We, we would like everyone to be able to sort of mix up, talk freely, and when it comes to the combat displays, the same thing in as much as if we have a series of combats displayed, uh, you could perhaps do them in the sense that rather than going on doing the same normal show that you would do for some outside audience, well we all know a lot of the spiels so we could cut down on that. Um, the best way I could suggest it would be to give everybody a rest in between. The idea is if one group from one club goes on and does something, and then another group would come on and do something, and then the other club, and so on, so that you can have fairly continuous activity. Uh, we might have the press up there from about 2 o'clock on, so um, not that I'm pandering the press, but if, you know, if people want media exposure, it'll be there, I suppose. Where's young Billy? Sleep up the back. Uh, sleep up the back. <laughs> but just before I ask Billy to come in and say a few words, and we get into the, the rest of them, has anyone got any really quick questions? I know we're rolling along a bit late. I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability. Um, but if, if they're not saying a few words, Bill? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's all yours. It's only a hospitality. Yes. Go for it. Okay, I'd, uh, I'd just like to recap on what Dave said, and I think that, you know, a lot can be gained out of this whole weekend, especially for clubs and individuals. Clubs can learn off other clubs. Uh, people can find out what other societies and, thing, and other people are doing within the <coughs> medieval scene. Uh, with these uh, lectures and things, a lot can be gained. Uh, uh, yeah, and at, at the feast, I think the feast is going to be sort of a good thing. Everyone, we hope to have a lot more people than, than what's here now. And uh, I think, it's, you know, basically it'll be just a really good thing. Just hope everyone uh, sort of gets something out of it because there is a lot to gain from it. That's about it. Thanks very much, Billy. No worries. Yeah.